Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about Batman from 1989. I recently did a podcast on Superman from 1979. And as much as I love Marvel and what they're doing, at a time Warner Brothers DC did it right. And this is one of those movies. Another time in my life I'm 18 years old or thereabouts and this movie comes out and I loved it I still love it I actually think it still holds up I'm impressed by the music and Prince's involvement in it let alone uh, directed by Tim Burton we have Jack Nicholson Michael Keaton Kim Bassinger Robert Wall Pat Hingle Billy D. Williams Michael Go. Is that how you say that? Jack Pat Palance. What an iconic movie. It still holds up. An inspiration for so many years of Batman stuff. It just really invigorated and reignited the love for Batman. I am a big, big fan of the 1950s or 60s Batman TV show. With all the pow, zap, booms, the um, bright colors, the campiness, the Adam West tropes and all the uh, Batgirl stuff. I love it. Even <laughs> even Cesar Romero's uh, joke the way he paints over his mustache is hilarious. And I really enjoy it. Now yes, it's a probably a form bias from being a child and growing up with it. I always looked up and would stay on my brother's right side because the uh, Batman logo would come up at the end of the beginning of the show and Robin would look up at, ba you know, my brother was always tall. And I'm um, a big fan, as I've said also in some podcasts, Dick Grayson, Nightwing, Robin is probably my favorite character in comics in totality. But what an experience going to the movies, a teenager, Batman being taken somewhat seriously, Jack Nicholson's performance. I still think it's the best Joker. It's one of my best Batman films and one of my favorite superhero films still to this day. And I can remember the oddity of thinking of Michael Keaton as Batman and Bruce Wayne. It was, you know, I mean, we didn't have major internet or anything back then, but there was a buzz about it, like, you know, Witches and Beetlejuice, which is a great fucking movie. And yeah, maybe I'll do a podcast on that. But what can you say? The Everything about this movie I love. Watching it again brings me joy, happiness. It puts me in that place. I think there's a charm to it that the movies don't, com uh, you know, don't compete with these days, especially Batman's. Although, I love Batman Begins. Love it. Not a big fan of the second one, and the third one's garbage with Bane. The second one with uh, Heath Ledger's Joker is okay. It's not my type of movie, but I can understand why it's, uh, received so well. Uh, in, in that sense, it's a generally a good movie, just not for me in that vibe. I want some campy nonsense stuff. This movie just really does it for me. Um, and like I said, I was surprised. Like, you hear these this music they use, and it's a Prince song, and you're like, What the fuck is going on? But it matches. And Jack Nicholson, how smart was he to come and do a Oh, I'll take this much money, and then I'll take some back end on merchandise or something. I don't know. I think he could have retired. Oh, I think he's such a great actor. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. He could have probably retired way before that, but he must have made a fortune. And what need to go into the plot of this movie? It's fucking Batman. Um, his origin. Well, you know, how many times have we seen that now? On how the Joker takes over Gotham and has these plans. Batman's got a um, defeat him and also find out the clues. There's a little bit of detective work in there. And the humor and the spot on wisecracking really works. I'm, I'm just a big fan. And you can take Michael Keaton now, the way he looks, and do a Batman Beyond or a, an older Batman type story because he's perfect for it. He's got the whole look. Granted, maybe the animated series did the fashion in after him in that sense, but I don't know. From the artwork, I don't think so, but. He's just so iconic now with his I'm um, Batman. It's just a joy to watch again. It's got so many good things going for it. And like I said, the actors, when you see Jack Palance's small role, 
I if watching it again, it's so like I guess I'm just a you know, big fan of his presence in movies. Jack Powell's just lent this and he's just doing the breathing thing and Jack Nicholson imitates him later. Yeah, it's just fucking awesome. And Batman's fucking killing people and it's just you don't hear the complaints that they were back, you know, the way they are now where Batman's in his vehicle and he's you know, he's clearly killing people. And they did it in this movie, so you gotta be fair. Blowing people up, throwing people down fucking you know, fifty star whatever the fuck it is. He's not this uh Adam West can't be Batman. But there's that blend that I really love this we're bringing a comic book to life. When I look at this city, I don't care how outrageous it looks. It's the comic book Gotham City. When you watch the new ones, it's like, okay, we're going to use Chicago. And they started putting things in there. And I'll give this new Batman coming up a chance. With, what was it Robert Patterson? I mean, you know, I don't know. I don't like him as a fucking actor, but fuck. You know, you do a good job. You do a good job. You're a good Batman in my, Bruce Wayne. Fine. I think... Um, one of the best portrayed Bruce Wayne was actually, um, the fourth one. What's his name? Uh, God, what the fuck his name? <laughs> what do you got to say? George something. Everybody hated him. He said he ruined Batman with the, you know, and again, I'll reiterate this because I, I might have said it here and there. I like Batman 89. I like Batman um, the second one with fucking the Penguin and um, Catwoman. Just dark, twisted movie. And Tim Burton's, you know, staple on it. And they carry that over for the other movies which people hate. And I love Batman Forever, Batman and Robin. I watch those movies over and over. Way more than I do the new ones. And I'm not saying that they're better movies. Yeah, I mean, some of these movies, like I said, the second... The Dark Knight or whatever. You know, excellently made movies. It's just not for me. I love watching the Batman movies start off and they just start grabbing things off the wall, putting on the utility belt. It just gets me. It brings me back to that Adam West can't be Batman, my comic book Batman. And yes, this tone kind of uh, stayed. So the first four Batman movies kind of had that feel. Gotham looked the same. They used the same Alfred um, and that's the guy's name. I think I got wrong, right? Michael Go. Oh, how, uh, how do you fucking pronounce it? He's been, a, you know, British actor many years. Um, and it just kept that theme together. The new ones, I can, I can give, you know, um, the new Alfreds and stuff like that. It's pretty good. Uh, Bell's Batman, okay. And as much as I'm gonna gush over this movie. One of my favorite Batman scenes is from Batman vs. Superman, the uh, warehouse scene. It might be the best Batman on film in an action scene. And the movie's garbage. The movie's shit. So, take that, whatever. Batman vs. Superman is a fucking horrible movie. Loves Wonder Woman in it in some parts, but, you know, anybody could pick out some great moments and visuals. But Batman 89 is a revolutionary... Um, movie event it really started ch changing things it's got you know the great huge box office critical acclaim one like an academy board for like that I, I don't know like performance directing or something like that you know I have to read these wikis and really get a uh, you know um deep into it memorize things but there's um a lot going on. The performances are just really great. And you look at the things behind the scenes, which is always interesting to me. I talk about this on a lot of podcasts. You know, learning about Tim Curry, David Bowie, John Lithgow, Ray Liotta, James Woods. All, you know, talking about being uh, the Joker. So there's a lot of that going on. And, you know, we can get into a whole podcast about Nicolas Cage being Superman. Because that was hilarious. And he actually got far in that production. There's um, just so much good about this movie. I wanted to um, really highlight this because I had just done my Superman one and a lot of my podcasts are really focused on Marvel because they're doing so much so well. It's, you know, 
Yes, uh, I do like the Titans TV show. I like some of the Flash, but it gets too tiresome, watered down, and boring. Same with Arrow, Legion of Tomorrow. They're just, for me, low-quality, fun things to get into once in a while. I you know, watch the uh, the crossover events, and you know, eventually you get stuck at a point where you're not you're back three seasons on the Flash, uh, one season on Arrow, whatever, and you're avoiding the crossovers. I did catch one, and it was done really bad. The uh, special effects, is the money wasn't there, but they tried. I'll give it that, and I'll have fun with it. And eventually, you know, maybe I will do a podcast on them. But this is just a time right now where Marvel's got some great movies, some great animation going on right now, and great television streaming services. Well, services, but shows. Um, I really loved Wanda and the Vision, or WandaVision. Same with uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I like Loki a lot, although maybe it's the weakest. I love all the Netflix Daredevil. Jessica Jones is still one of the best written first seasons ever. And it's whole it's three seasons uh, amongst the best. I don't think um, a lot of TV shows can get close to it. And I've said this before, but Daredevil season two, the best comic book adaption. Like, it feels like a comic book. Maybe not true adaption for word for word and panels, but... It just feels that way. There's so much going on. The Punisher showing up. John Berenthal. Just amazing stuff. And I look back, and when I did my Superman one, I'm like, I gotta watch Batman. You know, I'm watching Christopher Reeve, and I talked about the magic of being, you know, eight years old. Here we are, ten years later, and we've got Batman 89. They take a chance. It launches this huge fever and interest in comic book movies, and again... So, great time in history, great movie, it holds up, great behind-the-scenes stuff. I mean, you got this Commissioner Gordon, is bumbly, and it all just works in this instance, the way they put it together. I think, again, I am a huge fan of the old Batman from Adam West days on TV. The bright colors, the crappy costumes, the bamboo, slanted, tilted camera angles. Even their movie, I watch them all the time. I never let them slip by me when something comes on and it draws my attention and I watch them. And what can you say about Tim Burton's vision for this? It just worked, right? And he's, he's gone on to be a prominent director and stuff, and his vision for certain things are just unique. And it's, it's such a flavor and such a imprint that it stays for the four movies, and he's only involved in two. If you want to say he's, he's totally evolved in the second one. And again, I liked it. I liked the second one. I, I, it's a little creepy and darker. And the tone shifts really abruptly. And he stays there. But this is a fun romp. It's a great take on Batman. The Adam West. The comic book genre. Just enough campiness for me and seriousness. With a backdrop that's vividly comic book oriented you feel drawn into the panels like you're being drawn in to the comic itself i don't get that from any of these new movies none of them you can show batman in cool angles on top of a roof and it looks cool and it'll give you that you know that feeling but once you start seeing the skyscrapers and you recognize things and they want the realism i'm fine that people like it i just don't i'd i'd rather have this made up thing where they're driving their motorcycle and Batmobile on a fucking statue, breaking through things. I don't care if Mr. Freeze is uh, done by Arnold. Like, all those things don't bother me. I have fun with the movie. Now, a critic, just like I say about Green Lantern movie, which I like, I'm not going to defend it critically, so I'm not going to put some of these up to the critical scrutiny. They're just fun romps for me. Fun, enjoyable. They make me feel good. I don't look at the flaws. It's just brings me back to a certain place. And I think that's the fun of it. I think that's the great thing about entertainment and movies and how it's important. How, you know, we as a society, you know, we come from hunter-gatherers and go far back and whatever. And all those things get rewritten. And here we are, you know, building these mega cities, living together, um, still moving forward in society and 
These are the little escapes. These are the things we admire. Why do so many people get attached to actors when they're just human beings and you see them get interviewed and stuff and starts outrageous? Well, they're just fucking humans who got a job and their job is to act and they love doing it. Some maybe don't. The whole process of movie making, again, is amazing to me. I got a friend who does short movies. I'm so proud and like just, you know, awed sometimes at just the level of, you know, technical know-how and the savviness and the experience. And when you look at these movies and you see that wall of text at the end, how many people have to come together to make a great experience in a movie? I think it's very rare. I think it's special. And here's one of them. Batman, 1989. Michael Keaton, Jack Nicholson steal the show. Tim Bassinger is just uh, great. Even the side characters, your Commissioner Gordons. All the touches and the city feels like a character. It feels real. It feels as real as my comics did. And it doesn't mean, oh, we can compare the new Batman, uh, Dark Knight with Batman 89 and see how fake the background looks. That doesn't look so real. It doesn't matter to me because when I look at comic books and stuff, I don't have that feeling either. I don't look at it and go, okay, well, you know, this cell shade, you know, the way they colored this and shaded this, you know, it's their vision. And I think that's what's great about movies to be able to, you know, do everything and bring you whatever inspired you in the first place. And which is maybe a kind of knock against current things. We can do so many great things now. We can really make it feel and look like the comic books in such detail but they're not and they're going with a realer tone which is fine but the Snyderverse sucks basically Um, but I'm fine with him getting his own fucking Snyder streaming service let everybody get into that thing it's great people love it fine but this is where it was at for me these first four Batman movies captivated me yes I go back and chuckle at them They're critically not the best, although this one, I will argue, is one of the best. And then they deteriorate and get crazy loony. And I'm still there for the ride. I do not watch the new Batman movies like this. Not at all. Batman Begins, yes. I love it. Don't get me wrong. It's The other movies are probably done fabulously. Uh, Cinematography, camera shots. Great stuff. Maybe even superb editing. But it doesn't captivate me. It doesn't draw me in. It doesn't make me cherish the character. You think of my childhood and get good feelings. And I just see bullshit on the screen. And subpar writing. Subpar, you know, interactions. It seems like everybody is here for a vision. And the vision was given by a certain person and carried on. It ignited a whole new wave of interest. And got to give these movies credits for that. Superman, the one I did in 1979, is not an action-packed movie, but it's a character study and a heartfelt, real warming, touching, sometimes a little scary, story about it being from another planet. And this is a darker, you know, um, brooding atmosphere, which I understand, but it doesn't have to be so dry, dreary, and black and white. I really love these movies, and like I said, I love Batman Begins. I can tolerate the second one. The third one's just garbage with Bane. The Batman vs. Superman. Oh, by the way, I love Mike. I love fucking Ben Affleck's Batman. Justice League, and whatever he's in, I like him. I like the suit. I like everything going on with him. His attitude, his portrayal. So there's no nothing on that end. I even like um, Henry Cavill's Superman. So it's not that. It's just. The charm, the passion, the feel is not there. Although I give Wonder Woman a break on that, I really think, although people might have went with more of a Gina Carano type, I think her beauty, her, um, you know, not as honed skills work in her favor when it comes to the character. So I'm totally captivated in that sense. But here we are, getting to end of my... Um, Raving about Batman, 1989, directed by Tim Burton. I said who starred in it. It's just a captivating wild ride that I love. We'll watch it over and over. Jack Nicholson is still my favorite. 
everything about the nuances in the movie get me they still carry me so it's a total recommendation if you've ever not seen this i don't know you know i guess it could happen but there you go hope everybody's doing well take care of yourself and your fellow men and women love you all take care